Welcome to the Jenkins Platform Special Interest Group meeting. It's the 19th of November, 2021. Remember, we abide by the Jenkins Code of Conduct. Be nice to each other. So topics I had on the agenda were um, Java 8 end of life plan. And then let's see, Java version updates. Oh, multi-platform support blog. Uh, Java version updates and Docker image automation. Those were the only topics on my list. Tim, are there any topics you wanted to be sure we covered? Nope. Okay, so, so on the action items, we've still got an open pull request for the plugin installation manager docs. Um, that progress has been slowed because I've done no additional work on it. Um, it's got good use cases in it, just some of them are incorrect and need, need refinement before we publish it. Tim, are you okay with the idea of putting plugin installation manager documentation on www.jenkins.io? Would you rather we just point them to the readme and? Um, I don't want stuff that's gonna to change too much. Like Oleg's got a big PR to redo the command structure in, in the CLI. Um, uh, it's fine. I. It's different. Like, it'd be fine to have in reference documentation and tutorials, but I, well, I would say tutorials is probably fine, but I don't know how much detail that should really go on the website. Okay. So be, the, yeah. this particular pull request is look, is trying to outline some use cases. And it was, it was helpful, quite helpful to me because it pointed me to, oh, this is how I solve the use cases I have but it's probably got many more use cases than, than may necessarily. So how do you install it? How do you generate a list of plugins? How do you list the dependencies of a plugin? How do you install a particular plugin? Those kind of things. Are those okay for www.jenkins.io with short snippets on each, or would you rather we just point them, point them elsewhere and say, hey, go read it here and we'll propose them as pull requests to the configuration, to the, the tool itself? I think that probably belongs on the tool itself, really. Okay, all right. That would have the benefit that it can be at least in the repository when the tool releases we've got documentation associated with the tool. Yeah, it could be, it'd be fine to have like a basic page that just gave the most common use case and then links off to the other docs or even scraping the readme and including it on the website. But I think that the documentation is just a bit too in depth, I think. Good, okay, great. Links to other use cases. I had seen so, that pull request. I was kind of just avoiding it. It was quite and, and and that was it was a it was an effort we launched about six or nine months ago when a new contributor came on and said, "Hey, I'd like something," and I said, "Gee, this is one I'm interested in." The contributor did it, but then I found a bunch of flaws in it. I used it for what I needed. I learned what I needed, but then didn't didn't get it merged. So I think this is a good one. We'll just plan to repurpose it into pull requests to. The plugin installation manager docs, and then have hyperlinks from there, uh, from from Jenkins.io to the plugin installation manager docs. Yep. Great. Thanks. Thanks for that. All right. So next topic was Java end of life plan or alternatives, and it's really not. This is not a plan yet. So, Tim, I, I think you probably want to weigh in here. I've seen suggestions for things like, um, let's see, one was declare end of life in 12 months. Uh, or another was declare end of life plus, plus extended support if the security team is willing to do that. And, and it's in, N months where 12 is some, you know, some arbitrary number. Mm -hmm. uh, any, any other that you want to weigh in there on, hey, we should do, we should consider this way or consider this way? I don't think so. I mean, it'd be good to get the numbers 
fixed, um, but it looks like the numbers were, were a lot higher than we thought because of the broken usage stats. It's assuming that it's something like 25% or more are currently running on 11, um, but it would be good to see those numbers properly. Right, okay. Well, and, and yeah, based on the, the usage stats, that graph that showed a, a drop of, yeah, I think it was 25%, I'm assuming that that drop in reporting will, will now show up when we get it corrected as, hey, these are Java 11 users now. Yeah, I'd expect so. All right, guide sure. the decision. Good, okay. I mean, it's just more and more libraries and I mean, don't like the language is so Java, right? It's not like something like seven years old now. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's well, and, and yeah. we've now got Six. two LTSs after it, right? So we've got yeah. 11 and 17, both as LTSs after it. So the fact that it's so long lived is really impressive, but eventually libraries and Jetty is the, is the, classic example right if jetty drops support we have no choice so we've we've got to we just as well start the discussions we can we can live with stay on an older version of jkit but we really can't live stay with on an unsupported version of jetty yeah yeah and it's, it's better that we start it before jetty does it especially if they're doing it anyway right Exactly. Yeah. And, and Olivier's comment was, it may be a year or two before they drop support, but we want to be ahead of them in, in ending end of life. Mm, yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. So thought I had was declare end of life in some number of months or declare end of life plus extended support or declare end of life when use counts reach some threshold. And that one for me is a little less attractive because it makes it unclear for users but we could we could say hey we'll we'll start the process when we hit 75 percent or something like that or 25 percent of installs or java 11 something like that i don't think we need to um worry too much about numbers i think it's more for developers and security um like i think the numbers are high enough already um, I think. Good. Okay. Thanks. Because it's not like <laughs> when the last one of the last times it came up, people were like, there's only 800 instances using it. It's at 0.000%. We need to right. fix the adoption. Blah, blah. So, um, but it turns out, it turns out it wasn't like that, but, um, Things like the admin monitor probably boosted it a lot. I think so. I think we've got we've got every reason. And the admin monitor first became visible to LTS in 2.303. So so we're only one LTS cycle into having that admin monitor, but we're at least one in and we're already seeing good good motion or what we think is good motion towards Java 11. Hmm. Now my assumption is we would um, we would use a Jenkins enhancement proposal uh, similar to what we did with, with the Docker image change. Propose, propose the process, et cetera. And I don't know when that will work. I've got from a commercial side, I've got to be sure that I've discussed with people inside my employer to assure that, that this represents their concerns as well. And I've started those discussions. Do they even support Java 11 yet? Uh, they, are, they are actively in progress. <laughs> so, so, so yes, that's the nerve wracking part, right? Is, but there's lots of interest to, to yes, let's, let's proceed. Um, I guess another piece of this is, do, does this need to be connected to, to Java 17 in any way. And my, my thought was, no, it doesn't, it's really independent. Java 17 is a separate conversation, but we probably want a separate conversation in the next contributor summit about Java 17. Yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of a, a point and it's like, well, why? If you're gonna jump, why not kind of you could just jump straight to 17? 
yeah, although for me, that one is, I haven't seen enough. Yeah, I definitely haven't. Well, I haven't seen enough adoption yet of 17 to say that, that have, and is your sense, have you had a lot of bug reports from the preview that, preview that you provided for Java 17 on Docker? It's not very many people using it, but there's a couple of people who have tried it out. Okay. Great. I, that's all that I had on Java 8 end of life. I think we ought to just carry it as, a, as an ongoing topic here. I'm sure we discuss it and we'll continue in the mailing list. Okay, with you, Tim? Yep. Okay, great. So I had multi-platform support blog post. I wanna highlight that we've got AMD 64, ARM and System 390. As far as I understand it, we don't have PowerPC support because the QM, QMU uh, fix that we needed is not yet implemented. Is that consistent for you? I haven't tried in a few months, but the bug report's still open. Okay, all right. Someone, someone could try it again. You just have to enable it on the pull request. There's full validation on the pull request to make sure it works. Oh, okay. That's, you know, it's pretty trivial to test it. And it's been a few versions since, but um, yeah, there was a couple of comments on the bug report about routing at places, but nothing saying it was fixed. Great, okay, super. Uh, I assume you don't have any objections if I create that blog post. It's major portion of your work. I'm just gonna be describing it. That's fine, go for it. All right, okay. Um, Java version update automation. So this was when I needed a conversation with you, I think actually in terms of we've, I've, we've enabled uh, Dependabot on the Docker, the base Docker images, but I'm not sure that they're always consistently detecting uh, new changes to Docker images. Do you have experience there that you can guide on, hey, let's just give up on Dependabot and switch to update CLI, or do we, do we stay with Dependabot and, and see that it works? Problem with Dependabot is it's very zero configuration. So um, it's a problem and, and, and nice. It doesn't work very well with Docker. <laughs> it works um, only if there's like simple and increasing and formats that they parse. It's all, because generally they're not, they don't use the CLI tools or anything to figure things out. They use pattern matching and it can't, oh. it's, it's all written in Ruby and they kind of extract things out and um, cause I looked at it for seeing if we could get Jenkins version update, uh, updating working and yeah, they don't, they don't have any knowledge of anything outside of the file. They don't run Maven or anything, uh, at least with the Maven one. Um, it's all just extracting versions and string matching and finding them and then checking with upstream. Um, so I think it's. I think it's just some version formats work and some don't the UBI stuff works. Um, but I don't think anything else works. Well, Alma, Alma Linux works apparently. Okay, but so that's going from like 8.4 to 8.5. Yeah, so if you look at Alpine's working, Alma Linux is working. Uh, Debian's working apparently. Seems, seems to be doing everything, isn't it? Uh, so I might, so... might not be doing the, J, the JDK ones. Right. So, and so the Docker image stuff, I think, at least I think the ones that I've enabled have shown some promise of working. I've seen plenty of places where, where it's dubious to even have Dependabot enabled. For instance, I track Fedora versions on a, on a test repository that I run for platform labeler and it's no help, right? Their version numbering scheme is in, inadequate. So in terms of, yeah, so the Docker stuff I think is working. If we wanted to do Java, I can't see a way to do Java with Dependabot. At least it hasn't ever offered a, a Java update in our yeah. in our images. Yeah, Any it'll, be, it'll be the version scheme is not clear enough to it. Right. Let's say. So I assume no objections from you if somebody submits a pull request to try to propose to use update CLI or some other tool to do Java and Git and, and Git LFS, those, those sort of tool oh. internals. 
yeah, yeah, no, no objections. I mean, ideally, those most of those things will be done um, in the Docker bake stuff anyway. The problem is that Windows isn't supported there, unfortunately. Oh, 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 good point, Docker. But, I mean, we could have like a shell script with a lot of properties file at the root. Yeah, possibly like a properties file at the root, which just has all the versions. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. So using because bake, bake is just a natural way we're doing those things now. That makes sense. Great. Yeah. It means, it means we don't have to update 20 Docker files, but it's also annoying as yet that the Windows isn't supported. And have you seen any hints from the Docker, the Docker people that they're going to support Windows on Build X on Bake? It's um, it's nothing. It's not the Docker. They they so Bake relies on upstream, so container D is where the issue is. That container D. Um, I've I'm subscribed to the issue. So I'm, it's in a Microsoft repo somewhere. Um, so there was a community contributor working on it at some point and did some PRs to container D. Um, and Marks, I think Microsoft haven't done the work required. Um, there was a project, a program manager commenting in the thread a little bit, asking what people wanted it for, trying to, I guess, get enough reason to invest in it. Okay. All right. So, so conversations are continuing, but no, no commitment there. So if we yeah. if we did it as a top level property properties file, then we would have um, all the Linux all the Linux variants would be would get from a single location, and all we have to maintain is the Microsoft all the 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 one or two or three Windows images. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure you can make the PowerShell scripts read it as well. It just won't be as easy. Oh, oh, right, right, okay. Because PowerShell is a full full language, basically. Right, right. Properties file from PowerShell. Yeah, good point. It's just, it's not as familiar a language for some of us, like me. <laughs> mm, yeah. I just, well, these days you've got PWSH and it's more cross platform, it's a bit easier. But yeah, no, I avoid it. Okay. All right, and then the, the next one is on Docker image update automation. So we talked about Java. This one, it feels like we're doing okay. Um, uh, you noted that Alma Linux updates are detected. I've seen Debian ones detected, and I know that Alpine, or was Alpine detected? I think yeah, Alpine, Al was, Alpine was, yeah. Okay, so. Good. So we stay with stay with that dependabot for now. Excellent for Docker yeah, images. So it's just Java that I can see that's missing, which is a bit annoying, but right. All right. Thanks. Any other topics that you wanted to bring to the session today, Tim? Nope. Okay. Thanks a bunch. We've got an upcoming release next Wednesday. No, no, a week from Wednesday. It's not Wex. It's 10 days away, right? So we've got time to create those upgrade guides. Thanks very much. Cool. See you. See ya.